Welcome to MBLEX exam practice test. Our topic today is practice test 1. Use the link in the description to download the app on the App Store for free practice tests. Number 1. Using anatomical terms, what is the relationship of the sternum relative to the deltoid? A. Medial. B. Lateral. C. Superficial. D. Posterior. The correct answer is A. Medial. Explanation. The sternum is medial to the deltoid because it is much closer, typically right on, the midline of the body, while the deltoid is lateral at the shoulder cap. Superficial means that a structure is closer to the body surface, and posterior means that it falls behind something else. For example, skin is superficial to bone and the kidneys are posterior to the rectus abdominis. Number 2. What makes bone resistant to shattering? A. The calcium salts deposited in the bone. B. The collagen fibers. C. The bone marrow and network of blood vessels. D. The intricate balance of minerals and collagen fibers. The correct answer is D. The intricate balance of minerals and collagen fibers. Explanation. Bony matrix is an intricate lattice of collagen fibers and mineral salts, particularly calcium and phosphorus. The mineral salts are strong but brittle, and the collagen fibers are weak but flexible, so the combination of the two makes bone resistant to shattering and able to withstand the normal forces applied to it. Number 3. Which of the following lists of joint types is in the correct order for increasing amounts of permitted motion, least mobile to most mobile? A. Saddle, hinge, condyloid. B. Hinge, condyloid, saddle. C. Saddle, condyloid, hinge. D. Hinge, saddle, condyloid. The correct answer is B. Hinge, condyloid, saddle. Explanation. All three joint types given are synovial joints, allowing for a fair amount of movement, compared with fibrous and cartilaginous joints. Of the three given, hinge joints, such as the elbow, permit the least motion, because they are uniaxial, and permit movement in only one plane. Saddle joints and condyloid joints both have reciprocating surfaces that mate with one another and allow a variety of motions in numerous planes, but saddle joints, such as the thumb carpal metacarpal joint allow more motion than condyloid joints. In saddle joints, two concave surfaces articulate, and in a condyloid joint, such as the wrist, a concave surface articulates with a convex surface, allowing motion in mainly two planes. Number 4. What muscle is the primary antagonist in knee flexion? A. Hamstrings. B. Quadriceps. C. Gastrocnemius. D. Tibialis anterior. The correct answer is B. Quadriceps. Explanation. Antagonists are muscles that oppose the action of the agonist, the primary muscle causing emotion. Hamstrings are the primary knee flexors, the agonists, and the quadriceps fire in opposition. The gastrocnemius does cross the knee joint, so it is a knee flexor, although secondary to the hamstrings. Tibialis anterior is on the shin and is involved in dorsiflexion. Number 5. Which statement about autonomic nervous system drugs is correct? A. Anticholinergic stimulate muscle growth. B. Antiadrenergic drugs increase the fight or flight response and are used during heart attacks. C. Cholinergic drugs are sometimes called sympatholytic drugs. D. Adrenergic drugs can be used during a medical crisis. The correct answer is D. Adrenergic drugs can be used during a medical crisis. Explanation. Adrenergic drugs, such as an EpiPen, are used to halt allergic reactions and asthma attacks. They contain one dose of epinephrine, another word for adrenaline. Cholinergic drugs are not referred to as parasympathomimetics, not sympatholytics. Anticholinergic drugs relieve involuntary muscle spasms and do not stimulate muscle growth. Anticholinergic drugs block acetylcholine, decrease the fight-or-flight response, and are often used to treat gastrointestinal disorders and asthma. Number 6. A regular client comes in for his session, obviously flushed and sweating. He sneezes repeatedly in the waiting room and mentions during the intake that he really hopes this will make me feel better. What is the best course of action? A. Fire him as a client. It is unethical for him to expose you to illness. B. Go along with the session 
as if nothing were unusual. It would be rude to mention that he's obviously ill. C politely suggest that he come back another day because massage is contraindicated with a fever. D offer to do lymphatic drainage work since it will stimulate blood flow and flush out his system. The correct answer is C politely suggest that he come back another day because massage is contraindicated with a fever. Explanation. Working on a client with a fever or flu-like symptoms is contraindicated for two reasons. First, the client exposes not only the therapist but all the therapist's other clients to the illness. Second, massage can dramatically exacerbate illness symptoms. By increasing circulation, massage can cause additional inflammation and spread infection throughout the body. Clients should heal from the illness on their own and seek massage once their symptoms subside. Number 7. Which of the following is not technically considered a modality of massage therapy? A. Reflexology. B. Deep tissue. C. Hot stone. D. Swedish. The correct answer is A. Reflexology. Explanation. This modality promotes the concept that the feet, particularly the plantar side of the feet, contain many pressure points that correspond to almost every part and operating system of the body. It is important to note that reflexology is not considered massage but is often included on the menu of massage treatments at spas. It is common for a client to add a reflexology treatment to massage service but there are no massage techniques used during reflexology. Number 8. A client with fibromyalgia suffers from which of the following? A. Chronic pain. B. Acute pain. C. Hypertonic aliotibial bands. D. Poor circulation. The correct answer is A. Chronic pain. Explanation. Chronic pain differs from acute pain in its duration. While acute pain comes on suddenly, often as a result of injury, and tends to be sharp chronic pain can linger after an injury has healed or result from underlying health conditions. Fibromyalgia is a condition involving systemic muscular and joint pain accompanied by fatigue. While researchers have yet to identify the cause, fibromyalgia is believed to be due to neurological problems with properly processing pain signals. Number 9. What does the principle of stress reduction work symbiotically with? A. Nerve muscle connection. B. Tissue organ connection. C. Colon bone connection. D. Mind body connection. The correct answer is D. Mind body connection. Explanation. The principle of stress reduction works symbiotically with the mind body connection. Massage eases the muscle tension caused by emotional stress, and so massage can release emotional tension as well. In this principle, environment is as important as the massage. Soft lighting and relaxing music help create an atmosphere that fosters mental and emotional relaxation, allowing the physical benefits of the massage to bring the client's body back to health and wholeness. Number 10. What is a valuable tool for post-ural analysis? A. Grid roller. B. Plumb line. C. Back buddy. D. Rolling stick. The correct answer is B. Plumb line. Explanation. Plumb line is a string or wire attached to the ceiling of the room and weighted so it falls perfectly perpendicular to the ground. This is a valuable tool for post-ural analysis. Have the client stand beside or behind a plumb line to see whether their spine and other joints are out of alignment from their center of gravity. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for updated videos every week.